and we're back. The search for legendary locations continue. Oh, is that the faint? Uh, I thought I saw undead footprints for a second. It's nothing I'd love more than a nice big group of shambling Vidigangers for my low-level boys to wet their beaks on. So even though we're not actually getting paid to patrol or anything, I still think overall this expedition will be worth it money-wise. Even if just because of the fact that we found that, that good treasure. Orc Hunters. Let's take them on. Actually no, I want to save my, uh, my armor points for fighting into a ruin that I think we can take on. We've got five days of food left. I'm leaving all these little caves up so when we get the Orc Ambition we can just clear them out pretty easily. We are miles away from civilization. Let's just see how far we are. I think we need to head back when it's two days of food left. Maybe even sooner. Four days, five days of money. Stone pillars, that's new. I've never seen that before. Stone circles and pillars with strange markings hint at something eerie looming in the area. I've no idea what this is. Am I just blundering into... Ooh. You stumble across a woman in the swamps, alone with a rucksack and a pannier with rolls of what may be maps. And there's a dagger to her left hip and pots and pans to her right. There's a kicked campfire nearby and a pile of tomes shooed into a velvet sock. Everything she is and everything she has is covered in the greenery of the mire. She's standing there, staring at you and you at her. It is not exactly ordinary for a woman to be out alone in the bog. She smiles quaintly, hesitantly. Hello. With a hand on the handle of your sword, you are the surrounding parts for an ambush. You ask her what she's doing out this way and she says you wouldn't believe her. You've seen enough to lend credence to even the edges of whatever insanity she could respond with. The woman nods. Well, all right then. Come over and I'll show you. I'm just so curious. I want to know. Let's have a look. You tell the company to keep vigilant for scapegraces hiding in the swamp, but they only laugh and say you should have stopped at the whorehouse if you were so up and in a fit. Ignoring them, you head towards this woman. You find her on a log, a mushroom cap twisting in her hands, and she speaks rather honestly. I'm in search of a monster, and whether real or false, to me it is a monster all the same. Understand? In a way, you do. Not all monsters are real, and a bog broad like this could be crazy. You ask her what the supposed beast is. She eats the mushroom and then grabs a book and throws it your way. There's a page held by a leaf, and you open it. Drawn there is what looks like an octopus with limbs the size of longships. It is in battle with a whole navy and seems to even be winning. The woman leans forward, her limp green hands hanging like kudzu between her knees. The monster I'm seeking is the Kraken. Uh, hmm. So who are you? So what all do you know? You're a full on nut bar. Let's just ask who she is first of all. The woman leans back. She eats another mushroom and turns and stabs her dagger into a bug that has been scuttling across the log. Without so much as a pause, she eats it off the tip of it and speaks between mashing its carapace. Ordinarily, I'd be short on details and already waving this here dagger at your pecker, but I think you're keen on helping. I can see it in your eyes. You're a killer, a murderer, a lich, a fancier of the coin, and a crazy sum bitch. She swallows the remains of the insect and spits out its remains like the shells of a sunflower seed. She nods. I'm the daughter of a wealthy nobleman, but I'm clearly far away from that life. That <laughs> she is. So what all do you know? She turns to her tomes and stares at them as though they were gravestones. My father owns one of the largest libraries in all the land. In those halls I discovered stories of these very swamps. Stories by authors who, unwittingly, were repeating themselves. Ten years ago, a hundred, a thousand, all the same tale. A tale of men coming here, 
and men disappearing. Resolution is not sought and the answers are ambiguous. Bandits, diseases. One scholar simply said the men experienced such wonder at the beauties of the swamp that they decided to stay there. Can you believe that? Beauties of the swamp? Smirking, you say you're looking at one. She laughs. <laughs> I haven't seen myself in months, but I'm serious, stranger. I've searched these parts and I haven't found a goddamn thing. She points a finger at her books. 20 disappearances with up to 300 men, armored men with horses, some with caravans, some with protected highborn. And yet I look around out here and I don't see a single goddamn thing. You suspect if you fucked off and died in the swamp, no one would give a shit about you either, but that many tales is a little suspicious. I'm not going to call her crazy, I don't want to piss her off, so how can I help? The woman rummages through her rucksack and produces a signet unlike any you've seen before. She flips it to you as though it were a shite counterfeit coin. Got plenty more where that came from. Well, not exactly here. Not here exactly. Wouldn't want you getting any ideas about robbing and ravaging, you know? But you do what I ask and I'll dump a chest of those on you. You pocket the signet and ask her what's needed. She answers. That I'm not entirely yet sure of. Sailors talk of the Krakens as being natural enemies to whales. But, well, there are no whales around these parts, given we're on land and all. But there is something close. An unhold of the bog. I suspect the Krakens, though through aeons of time, moved inland and fed upon what they could, and, like when they were in the seas, found an enemy here just as well. Bring me three unhold hides, and I may be able to lure the beast out of its slumber yet. Out of its slumber? Where the hell would it even be sleeping? You shrug and figure if she's willing to rid herself of such magnificent jewelry, then you'd be more than happy to oblige her. I'll bring you the hides. But not any time soon, let me tell you that. The prospect of fighting a uh, kraken is something we are not at all ready for. I think once you have a full group of, let's say, at least level 15s with like loads of legendary gear. I've never ever fought a Kraken. I've never even seen anyone fight a Kraken. I can only imagine it must be fucking hard. Okay, we are so far away that we're in danger of running out of food, but yet we still got four days of food. Now, none of it's mysterious meat, so we're not going to get poisoned or sick. Let's just check and make sure none of this stuff is about to rot. Two days, two days, but we'll eat that first. Three days. Okay, time to head back. What, what, what a cool background and story for the Kraken. So if we really have to, I think we can go that way and that way. We'll clear out that. If we are really forced to, we can fight a group of orcs and get some mysterious meat. Man flesh. Long pig. Sun pan. Cool name. We're in orc territory. Rubrok. Some young, a berserker, a plethora of warriors. Okay, these mountains are too big, we'll go around them. So clearly this is the orc world, so I would expect that that would be goblin territory nearby. out for ages. Our little exploring foray has been a touch disappointing. It's not been a whole lot to find. And I've got no incentive to fight those orcs. Let's see, we've got a day and a bit of provisions. Many necrosavons, no thanks.
We'll stop in at Ruins of Stalwart Keep and clear it out. But first, I didn't re realize that this necromancer haven was near. I'm hoping we can pick up a patrol of zombies. Nope, no luck. Okay, we're up against I know not what. So, wooden sticks. No, you need a dagger. I'm sure I had another dagger here somewhere. Didn't I? Benjamin, Archer, Ninja, Archer, Shield Breaker. Dawn of Dane 206, Ruins of Stalwart Keep. Here we go. Whoa, big old bandit group. <gasps> Master Archer! He's got a warbow! got to pick the time, the right time to go chase him down with a melee fighter. Trying to shoot him with our own bowman is uh, a bit of a fool's errand. They have ridiculous uh, range defense. That's 16%. That being said, fuck it, just try. I mean, if the shots go astray, they can hit, you know, almost anyone, so. I don't feel any reason like I need to move. I mean, the raiders are coming towards us, so that's fine. I think I would do well to move most of the people up to the northern side. I want to get Lexias away from that master archer. Shot. Shields up, boys. That Master Archer is dangerous. He doesn't have a clear range. He doesn't. Okay, good. Ah, so they're maintaining a shield wall, huh? Okay. Says, oh, I think just start taking aim shots at that master archer. We saw how accurately he was shooting at the necromancer. Oh, please be out in the open when I get a chance to shoot at you. Oh god, I'll be thrilled if I can get my hands on that warbird. It's gonna save us 6,000 gold. Howie. He, he's got an angle, he's obscured. Two, three. Charging him, I don't think is the right thing to do. Ah, he's got nimble. And fast adaptation. You motherfucker. I'm really not concerned about the other marksman. Probably should be, but if I can just fucking kill this dude, I'll be so happy. If that tier 2 crossbow marksman moves up to high ground, then we'll address that problem. Yes. Die. Shields up. Patience, lads. This feels good, like there might be legendaries in here. 20 raiders is a lot. Brigands, I mean. Now 
Y, but then again, Nimble is amazing. Good blocking. Do I not just blast straight through that radar? It's weird that there's no bandit leader, unless he's standing in the dark there somewhere. Oh, so close! I mean, as soon as I kill him, they'll just move another raider in front of him, but yeah, that's fine. Keep trying. Great shot, Clout. Okay, he's still exposed from that side. 33, 23. Oh, look at you with your little spear. No. Oh. As soon as the master archer goes down, I think they'll start coming towards us. I was going to say, as soon as the Master Archer goes down, we charge them, but there's no point. Ah, oh, hello, Ottle Bleakheart. What average gear you're wearing? Oh, and he misses. Good. So, what type of legendary weapon would I most like to get my hands on? Either a legendary greatsword, because it's so versatile. Or a legendary two-handed flail, or legendary two-handed mace. Because as we've seen from previous fights, Mersault has real damage numbers problems. He doesn't do enough damage. So 144 or 222 is then 44. Ah! Yes! Pierced hand. He's got a headhunter as well. Shit. Dangerous. That's like a full damage build. Now that he's got a pierced hand, I feel happy to not have to maintain shields. It's a minus 20% chance to hit. Let the lads catch their breath. This dude is still dangerous. But it's one tier 2 crossbow and the lads are very heavily armored. And I've got heart advantage. Nice, a full round of enemy marksmen that all missed. It just feels like the brigands are going to start coming towards us now. I'm actually going to have full neck shoot once and then move. That'll allow Cesar to come in here and have the open shot at him. Because as good as full neck is, he's not as dangerous as Cesar. Shot to the face. Whoopsie, I meant to take a shot there. Okay, and Cesar's fatigue still looks pretty good. Five. 
Mrs. Fuck Good. Man, the difference that this terrain makes is amazing. I'm sure you guys have seen before in previous episodes, if, if I start a fight and I can see that it's unfavorable terrain, I'll just run away and reset the battlefield. There's nothing cheesy about that, there's nothing difficult about, wrong about that. You have to have the right uh, battleground set up or you're in for a bad time. Come on, Cesar, one more, buddy. Got him. And he dropped the war bow. Yes. And as, as I suspected, that's the cue for them to run at us. <laughs> Not much of a leader. He's <laughs> shitting his pants. I run away. Oh, right in the face. That's a brave lad taking his position. So again, apologies if this is a bit dull to watch. But I mean, I have such a superior bit of positioning. Why the hell would I move? I just keep nailing these guys with my ranged fighters. It's also crazy to think that I'm at the situation where that brigand leader is running away with 200 points of body armor and 200 points of head armor. And I'm like, eh, whatever. I expect that in the course of fighting these lads, he'll regain his composure and come back to us anyway. Come on, brigands, come forward. At some point, you need to come charging at us. By all means, leave your marks when exposed. I'm sure nothing horrible will happen to them. Cesar's looking at these lads in the open and just salivating. He's like, oh, yes! Stand out in the open. You see that, full Mac? That's your warbo right there. percent save your fatigue once this dude goes down they 100 percent gonna start then coming towards us I even forgot about that guy still exposed there to full Mac who can f kill that marksman and I expect Cesar to finish off that d dude this turn could stop going towards them but let's just respect that crossbow at least percent 49 good it nice that's a first that leg he was actually exhausted from just reloading his crossbow I feel like the AI could be doing better here it's obvious that it, it can't come close to winning the ranged battle. But there's just no incentive for me to run at them. All I'm going to do is take more armor damage unnecessarily if I run towards them. What 
surely this is the turn, turn they come towards us. The crossbowman is panicking. This dude is one shot away from dying, as is that guy. Alright, suit yourself, Raiders. Just keep just keep eating crossbow bolts and arrows. I think what I can do is I'm gonna move Clout forward. I really wanna try to tempt these guys to come forward. Because I can always rotate him with one of the frontline boys. 53, 61 is nice and high. It's a trap! Uh, fuck it, take a breather, I think. Yeah. The Frosty. Oh, good, they're going for it. Nice one, Aloysius. Nice one, Leg U. And he's able to recover. Awesome. I'm really surprised they didn't take that bait there, though. Oh, well. Get him, lads. It's open season on brigands now. So, yes, it's dangerous to have these lads without cover in front of them, but the main range threat is taken care of. Here he comes. Bring me that armor. Extra bit of money, that is. Really? You can't see that, marksman? <laughs> Amazing, says all. God, Clark McDowd is a bit of a pincushion, isn't he? Oh, fuck, and he's exposed to that marksman. That's an oversight. I need to get, uh, for every level up now, Clark McDowd needs to take range defense. That's his, his big weakness is his range defense. 70% but fucking misses. Ski. So how do I get onto that dude? Could go like that. Now let's just smash this dude's head in and hope for a, a panic response. Frosty, I want him using his axe on the next turn. Lederach. Actually, punch him down. Yeah, because you see Lederach has shield expert. And this is new where they said that, uh, what's it, and knockback skill gains 15% chance to hit. <laughs> yes, Alois, yes. Yes, Otto, come closer. Come to Eisenbart. He's got a dagger for you. Guys, let's actually get in line here and start shooting at that nerd on the next turn.
Don't want these lads going anywhere. In fact, this is great. Yeah, this is the one. Is that, does that still count as unobscured? Nice. I've just given Clout McDowell's height advantage. Rotation keeps giving benefits. Lodorak. For 20 seasons, you guys have been telling me how rotation is the best skill in the game. I listened. I just, it only took 20 seasons. That's not bad. So in a fight like this, I wonder if the fact that some of the raiders might escape, does that affect your chances of getting a legendary? I certainly hope not. Because that, how disappointing would that be if it's like, oh no, you didn't get the legendary because you let some guys escape. I doubt very much that's the case, but let's not take any chances. Get him, bull. Oh, bite him in the face, good boy. Get him, they're escaping. the hound there you go yeah the, the, the vision on these dudes with the full helms is look at that understandably rubbish what's well that nice and bot Monster. <laughs> Shit, so at least two of them are going to get away. Good doggy. <laughs> now I do need to pick up recover on full Mac. In fact, Fulmaker, pick up that war bow off the ground. I don't want any shenanigans after the battle. If there's a tiny chance you don't get that, I'll be so fucking annoyed. Careful, dogs. Ow! Whoa. Animal abuse. Get him. Pretty cool that Lex says is already coming online. Oh, I don't have quick hands. Fuck. Next turn. Never mind. So no legendaries. But that that that's the main thing, the war bow. Incroyable. This is an auspicious occasion, gents. Phil Mac, you've been with us for 67 days. Well done, mate. I hereby present you with your warbo. And confer upon you the title Almost Ranged Expert. 190 foot uh, this footman's armor actually has rubbish numbers 24 fatigue for 190 a transitional armor consisting of a long mail shirt and a riveted leather gambeson not great nasal helmet with mail that's not bad numbers 200 for 12. you can't beat these cellar helmets for the back line Mm. 
note to self keep all of the wooden sticks we find because then we can start taking on a few hex and fights i already did on one two but uh, i need to get that poisoned apple and the other what's it the witch hair Two eighty, it's a bit much. I should check what that is. Maybe it's a delivery. Escort caravan to Skullagrad. I don't want to go all the way to the north yet. No thanks. We're just gonna grind some missions and get some money up, enough money to pay for our next expedition. We can either finish exploring the orc wastes, but I think we'll have better time out here. Also, we need to head back down to what's the city called? Galpstead. Go to Galpstead and go to the training hall. I think some of the low-level guys need to refresh their training. Five battles, three battles, two. Okay, we're still fine. Ah, oh, but because we need tools, we need to head west to the coastal tool, tool providing cities. Three skull noble mission. Oh, look at this is great profit. Nice. I think we have enough axes to fight the Shrut. I don't think I need to keep a hold of any more axes. Uh, we need to keep one extra kite shield. Ooh, 226. Nice. Ammo wise, one, two, three. Food. I can actually make a decent profit off those dyes. Uh, how many tools did we buy? We bought only 40 tools. Yeah, we got a head west. Uh, southwest in the steep a couple okay what you got for us rampaging greenskins hell yes pay us more 3400 awesome that's gonna be hard but because they're rampaging we can just pull them into reinforcements any cellar helmets nope and at a certain point a noble male, technically, I think, is the very best male you could give someone on the back line. Because that's 15, which is the maximum for nimble, and then only the weight of the helmet then starts lowering the, the nimble value. Like, that's nice and cheap, but, like, eventually, in the super long term, when we have no concerns for money whatsoever, we'll have seven sets of noble male for the back line. But that's going to take forever to get that. Even finding noble male is hard enough, let alone being able to afford it. There's no one new here that I want to hire. Righto. Off to the west we go. We've got some tools to grab. I could also pull these greenskins into a ruin, but that's quite risky. Actually, this is going to be a rough fight. Let's go grab a drink at the tavern. Cheers, boys. Breakfast beers. Okay, we've got to be careful here. We're approaching this village from the south. I need to make sure I don't blunder straight into these green skins. If we're super lucky. 
like I was gonna say, if we're super lucky, it would be just a bunch of uh, goblin wolf riders, which are actually pretty easy to kill if they aren't supported by archers. This is fucking tricky, though. Considering the last fatality we had was to a, a bleed to death from an orc warrior, we 100% need to find a military unit to pull these guys into. Hey, close. That's very close. Hopefully we can find the first Bitterfeld Legion trading caravan. Nope, not enough. I remember many hours ago when the first time I discovered you could actually do this with marauding greenskins. It was such a game changer. The Forsaken returned. Many mercenaries, a master archer and a war dog. Uh, no, that, that, that seems a little light actually. Yeah, look at the Forsaken return. They're like, nope, 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 nope. Noping the fuck out of there. We need a group of like 27 soldiers. You find a man sitting next to a hole on the ground. Beside him is a metal stake. Oh, this is the thing with the Alp. I haven't got time for this shit. We're good. Come on, where's some cocking soldiers? Trading caravans abound. But no soldiers to be had. I can't resist hiring a bunch of stout farmhands because if we get lucky with the star distribution, we don't. A farmhand can be a superstar with the right star distribution. But the game hates me. God, those orc marauders are sneaking up on me freaking quick. Okay, so where am I most likely to find soldiers? Probably Krakenwald. These watchtowers are usually where you can find soldiers. The thing is that if I go to Krakenland, I'm, I really kind of, you know, I can only play that that trick once because then I'm, I'll be trapped down in the south. I'm probably better off heading west. Just staying on the main highways. The Cold Hearts Company, that looks a bit better. Lots of mercenaries and a swordmaster. What do you say, lads? I think I say no, because Alex says he's still only level 5 and he doesn't have footwork. He would have to be so friggin' careful. If we can coax them into a daytime battle with the Cold Hearts Company, maybe. And a trading caravan. Oh, fuck. Um, I think these mercenaries are going to run away, and so are we. The problem, is, the problem we have here is that our main advantage was our ranged fighters, and we can't really make use of them now. Has their composition changed? I could have sworn that it was Orc Young, a Warlord, Cats Berserkers. What do you think, boys? We stay and fight? Stay and fight. We got enough. Our armor is heavy, our lads are tough. Mercenaries are doing good work. I think keep your shields up for now, boys. Like, heater shields would have been better for the melee defense, but at least the kite shields are actually tougher. And now, especially, this will be good for us if these mercenaries go forward and take most of the beating while we can, you know, get our damage down. Yeah. 
Those mercenaries are shooting with quick shots at 35% even at night, so that's pretty good. I forget the name of these mercenaries. Was it Cold Heart Company? Anyway, pleasure to work with them. Lexes nails it. Okay, prepare your legendary axes. These lads are going to hit the front line very soon. That's annoying. It should have revealed that uh, berserker in there. Okay, overwhelmed. That's nice. That fucking swordmaster needs to get his ass to the front line. Good throw. Hold the line, boys. Be ready for some rough fights. Unlucky clout. These orc shields are a bugger, but at least most of them seem to have cleavers. And yes, the cleavers are scary. But at least uh, they're not axes. I, I prefer them to have cleavers than axes because the axes they just shatter your shields and then you got no defense. Lodorak. That is fucking scary. I'm tempted to rotate Eisenbart and start stabbing Gothna Ari. <laughs> fucking get up there and start attacking these fucking mercenaries. If they're just gonna stand there, then we're in deep shit. So going forward here is a mistake. I need this orc berserker to move in first. There's no sense in dropping a dog because it'll just give them confident. No assault. Immune to stun, so nice. at least they're not immune to dazed. I wish I had a second mace master for more stacks of dazed on more enemies. The mercenaries are getting involved now. Oof! Does that dude not have nimble? That's no good. Brack. Fucking get him. Nice hit. Okay, that little uh, scimitar is doing fuck all, but at least it's stacking uh, overwhelmed. Ah, the shields are going to be a nightmare to get through. But these steel shields, it's pretty pointless trying to break through them. Okay, here's what gets scary. Oh, that mercenary is not long for this world. It's still a rough fight, but I fancy our chances to break their morale. Dink. Dink. 
Here is the scary one. So just just to put to put the value of nets into perspective, that's like a 60 gold net. That's just stopped that freaking terrifying orc warlord from potentially one-shotting someone. When you have overwhelm, don't use aimed shot, you tit. It's good though. Nice. These are some brave caravan hands. I can respect that. Okay, who's got the least armor? Unfortunately, Cesar and Full Mac are pretty much useless now. Stun, unlucky. I'm really feeling the absence of a uh, Warhammer user. But we'll get one into the squad eventually. Uh, let them go first while your shields are up. Orcs are so tough. Good. Orc Warlord's almost down. Problem is there's no net though, so we can expect him to take a swing at someone. Hopefully he swings at this mercenary and not at Isenbard. Oh, Jesus! That answers that question. Carson okay, can just rotate himself out in the next turn. He'll rotate with full Mac, who will then foot footwork away. Oh no! Oh! Fucking hell! That just came out of nowhere. He's got two shot. Okay, oh, thank God, it was a strike down, not a kill. But holy fuck, that came out of nowhere, didn't it? It was one shot from the Warlord and one shot from the Warrior. Fucking hell. Well, so much for uh, rotating Isenbard out. Let's pray for brain damage, boys, and not a fractured elbow or something that means we have to... Have to fire him. So if we have to end up replacing Bart. I think it'll be with a with a, cle a cleaver user, either a duelist, but most likely I'll make it a cleaver user that uses a two-handed cleaver. Well, suppose I'll make that decision once I know what the next late game crisis is. If it's undead, then we can make him a cleaver specialist. If it's green skin crisis, we'll make him a, a duelist cleaver, a cleaver duelist. Actually, no, no, not, not a duelist. I have tried cleaver duelists before, and they're just consistently underwhelming. See, I want to step in here, but surrounding myself is not smart. Wait. Great hit. Oh! 
Like, I could have maybe finished off that warrior, but the 94% chance is too high to turn down on that warrior. Yeah, I get fucked. So he has another orc warrior attack. He's just gonna attack the mercenary or the dog. Yes, the frosty. A turn too late, unfortunately. In retrospect, when I threw those two nets, I should have thrown the one net and held the other one, expecting the warlord to break out of the first net. The fucking dog, Grizzle, just killed the warlord. Fucking orcs, man. You don't mess around with orcs. These fucks are dangerous. Well, that's our first orc warlord of the campaign. Well done, boys. Actually, leg you, you're better off with the fighting axe. This fight would have gone much better if we were able to fight during the day, but they snuck up on me, bastards. <laughs> I don't think I did too much tactically wrong, but I mean, that's just, man, Orc Warlords, you don't fuck with them, mate. Jesus. Asenbart got two shot, and he's got 300 head armor and I think 250 body armor. But to be fair, off my frontline lads, he has some of the lowest melee defense. Pray for brain damage. But something like missing finger, missing eye, brain damaged. What else wouldn't be too bad? Uh, traumatized also wouldn't be too bad because we can give him that necklace. We've got one other traumatized lad as well, but Dyson Bart's more important. <laughs> percentage chance was for Isenbar to have gotten hit with a bit of luck you know that that, uh, that axe shot from the wall could have just bounced off his shield and this would be a very different fight Club foot, maimed foot, okay. That, 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 okay, fine. That, that sucks. It does suck because he's going to have a real issue retreating. But it, at least it means now that I kind of know I need to work towards replacing him. And I kind of wanted to anyway to see if a two-handed cleaver user can do better. I just got to be very careful with my fights. If it's a fight that I'm at all iffy about and I might want to run away from, rather leave him at home. Because he obviously can't flee. Hmm. A bit of bad luck that.
Okay, and then we'll hang on to that paint for the next Sallet helmet we get our hands on. I wonder if you can paint this helmet. I doubt it. Yeah, you can't. Can you paint? Your know, legendaries and uniques you can't paint. That makes sense. Can you paint an orc shield? No. He has all the bloody heater shields on the back line. Oh, but I do still have the other ones. Okay, yeah, fine. Okay, friends, bit of a roughie that, but hey. Taking on a, a mission that big, we knew it was going to be tough. And it's a great payday. Okay, friends, thanks for watching. I'm still going for now, and this is Battle Brothers. I'll see you guys next time.